ever wondered how dangerous corrupt spiritual leadership is to the church and to individual lives in today's video we're going to look at the devastating effect of corrupt spiritual leaders uh, and leadership in the house of god and in the lives of believers god bless you i'll see you soon welcome to my channel this is where you have lots of devotionals bible studies and encouragement through your faith work now subscribe and hit the notification bell i'll see you hello you're welcome to my channel my name is ifoma samuel i'm excited that you're here today is our day 104 and we're going through micah chapter 1 all the way to micah chapter 4. the theme of our discussion is corrupt leadership Let's go to Micah chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and walk evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. That is how evil this group of people are. And God is saying he's not going to, he's not going to let them go. All right? He's not going to let them go. Verse, verse 3, it says, Therefore, thus said the Lord, Behold, against this family do I devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go haughtily, for this time is evil. Now God is going to rain his judgment on people who take others you know, upon their beds. They plan how to take others' life, lives, plan how to take other people's livelihood, oppress them in some way or, or in some fashion, or even take take their, you know, on life, or, you know destroy their, their, their families. God says, you know what, I'm going to come at you. This is what is going to happen, Right? In verse 7, it says, O oh, thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord strightened? Are ye these, are these his doing? Sorry, do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? Now, I, I, I looked at that scripture again, and I um, let me read, read the NKJV. It says, you, are, you who are named of the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord restricted? Are these his doings? Do my words do good to him? Do my words not do sorry, do not my words do good to him that works uprightly? Absolutely. God's word does good to those that walk uprightly. This is like um comparing. Oh, I, I I sat down and I, I reflected. This is a, this particular scripture is a is a scripture or a verse that reminds us about reflection. Okay. At this point, there were a lot of false prophets, a lot of um, yeah, a lot of false ministers being being around, okay, deceiving God's people, causing them to walk in in destruction. And in Micah chapter chapter two verse seven, God asks that question: Are these my expressions? Are these are these my doings? Are these a representative of me? Are these from me? You have walked me long enough. And when I got to that point, you you know, it made me re realize that. God expects us to ask ourselves questions, you know, throughout our journey. God expects us to ask questions, ask ourselves the real hard questions. Let's go to Micah chapter um, 3, verse 2. It will give you a better understanding. It says, oh, let's start from verse 1. And I said, here I pray you, O heads of Jacob, ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Who hates the good and love the evil? Who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones? Now he's talking about all the leaders. And if you go back, the same thing. That's why he's asking them in verse 7. Are these my works? Are these really what I've called you to do? It's a, it's a time for reflection. And from time to time, we should ask ourselves, you know, look at your journey. Are, are, are these, is this what God has asked you to do? Is this... Are these things, okay, my doings, things I do, are they representative of God? Are they, are they part of God? Does, does it show or do they show that I'm a believer? You know, do they show those things? Look at that. Verse 5 of chapter 3. It says, Thus said the Lord concerning the prophets that make the people err. That's the evil. Okay, they make the people err. That bite with their teeth and cry, peace. And he put it not into their mouth. They even prepare war against him. He's talking about all the prof false prophets. What, what are you guys doing? Like seriously, you're making God's people to walk away. Now, in several videos, uh, we've seen you know the prophets being the uh, prophet Jeremiah. We see, um, including Ezekiel, Isaiah. They talk about this all the time, over and over, about how spiritual leaders, you know, corrupt God's people. How? 
Micah chapter 5, 8 to 11 talks about the deeds and the activities of corrupt spiritual leaders. It says, but truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. This is Micah talking. I'm full of power by the Spirit of God. Because you cannot do so many things with God. You cannot walk with God if you are not full of the Spirit of God. Okay? He's full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God gives boldness to speak the truth. It gives boldness for you to... The Spirit of God gives boldness for as a minister. Okay? It gives you boldness to, to minister to people of high... Um, you know, people in high places. For you to speak to people in authority and call their call out their transgression. No, this is where you have erred. This is what God says about what you're doing. It takes so much courage. And that courage, that boldness comes from the presence of God's presence of um, the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Okay, you cannot walk with God if you're not filled with the Spirit of God. For you to be able to serve God's people, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, let's finish that. Verse 9, it says, Hear this, I pray thee, ye, house of, ye heads of the house of Jacob and the princes of the house of Israel that abhor judgment. That's number one thing. They, they pervert or they, um, yeah, they kind of rest judgment. They don't allow the, what is supposed to be, say yes, what is yes supposed to be said and no when no is supposed to be said. They don't do that. They abhor, they hate judgment. That's the beginning of abhorring judgment. Number two, they pervert equity. Notice that word, pervert e all equity. They don't want they don't want it. Now, if you if, okay, for your for the sake of better understanding, you're free to check out the meaning of equity. It's quite different from equality. Equity. Being just. God expects us as leaders. If you're a leader, wherever you are, God expects you to do what? To have a sense of good, sound judgment. A sense of justice, whether you are in the workplace, whether you wherever you find yourself, even in your home, your family, God expects you to have sound judgment, okay, as well as provide equity. What but this this corrupt leaders they're not interested in those, right? They're not interested in those. It goes on, it said they build up Zion with blood. That's number three. Building up Zion with blood. That means they murder, they actually murder people, all right. Number four, it talks about iniquity and Jerusalem with iniquity. So leaders, spiritual leaders are supposed to, um, yeah, try and, you know, God, by God's help, we also, as believers, we're not saying we're perfect people. We have our struggles, but we walk earnestly, okay? We walk earnestly and um, try, we, we walk earnestly by the Spirit of God, by His grace to overcome the temptation, to overcome some of these drawbacks that we have in our personal lives right but not not in the sense of this walking in iniquity iniquity means persistent sin knowing that it is sin and continuing in it okay verse 11 says the heads therefore what else do they do they judge for reward you give them money then they judge in your favor that kind of a thing that's number five number six they teach for hire you pay me then i come to i come to minister you know they teach for hire it's like, uh, give, pay me, then I come, I show up. It's not right. That's what God is saying. It's not right, right? And the prophets thereof, what do they do? They divine for money. That's number seven. You come to the prophet and you're like, oh, can you pray over this? And let's see what the Lord says. They ask you, you have to pay up. When you pay, then I go to do the divination. Then I go, you know, inquire. That's not right. That's not right. That's what Bible says. This is, these are all corrupt, the signs of corrupt leadership. These are all the signs. And what is the effect? God's people, they cause them to err. They cause them to walk in error. That's the effect. That's why the church is not on fire. That's why the church and the, church and the congregation seem dead. That's why it looks like there's no fire on the altar. Because of corrupt leadership, the effect of corrupt, corrupt leadership, and the church cannot distinguish that which is holy from that which is unholy, that which is profane and that which would honor God. The church cannot tell apart. Why? Because of corrupt leadership. That's what we're seeing. That's what the word says. Yet they will lean upon the, on, upon the Lord and say, is it not, is not the Lord among us? No, none evil shall come near us. And then they boast. There is no God in what you're doing. Look at all the things. The seven things mentioned here. 
There's no God in what you do. That's what God is saying. There's no God. Don't mention me. Don't say I'm there. Okay? Because they keep on saying, oh, God is among us. No. <laughs> Go check the scripture. Is God really among you? It goes back to that question at first. The question in Micah chapter 2 verse 7. It says, oh, thou art named you know, the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord restricted or striated? Can you actually, you know, restrict it? Can you, can you do that with the spirit of God? No. Are these his doings? All the things that God itemized. Okay, if you go back to that scripture, look at it. Are these God's doings? Are these his expressions? Okay, are these the acts of God? Really? And he goes on to ask one last question. Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? Hallelujah. When we walk with the Lord, God's word will do good to us. Seek ye the Lord and ye shall live. The same message. Okay? The same thing. Consistently. Wow. God help us, right? God help us. I love... I would like to... Uh, yeah, let's tidy up with this. Let's just tidy up with this. There's always hope. After all of the conversation that we have, God never leaves us without a hope. All right, Micah chapter 4, verse 4 says, But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the mountain top, in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, the people shall and people shall flow into it. Amen. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of God of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways he will teach us of his ways amen we will walk in his path amen for the law shall go forth of zion and the word of god and the word of the lord from jerusalem amen so those days are coming when people are going to search for god's word yeah people are going to look for god's word people are going to be hungry to learn of god and god's and they'll, and they'll say you know what god is going to teach us his ways and those days are coming okay these are the days when god is going to put a hunger in the hearts of believers, in the heart of unbelievers. People will look for the living God. People will look for him. And I pray that when they look for him, when they seek him, that they find, they find God. Okay, they find him. God bless you. Thank you for listening. If you're not yet a subscriber, click the subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video. Leave a comment. Let me know how this has been a blessing to you. Okay, I see you. God bless you.